Well, good evening and welcome to Bellevue Heights Church in this Palm Sunday weekend celebration. Would you thank Jim and Heidi for drawing us in to worship this evening? Well, I'm Pastor Randy on behalf of the pastors and the BHC singers and orchestra. We welcome you to this special night of worship. On your way in, you can see you're surrounded by palm fronds, and you're not just surrounded by fronds, but you're surrounded by friends as well, and they would love to connect with you. If this is your first time here, they're the ones to ask if you have any questions. Another great way to connect is inside of your program. We have a connection card. You fill that out, take prayer requests, let us know any information you want to share, and then drop those off in the giving kiosk on your way out this evening. Well, I have a quick story and invocation. It was spring of 1994, and I was five years old, and it was Palm Sunday. <laughs> and I was in the children's choir, and I had to walk down the aisle. I had to wave the little palm frond, sing the Hosanna chorus, and I was not going to have any of that. <laughs> my mind was racing, my emotions were through the roof, and my will was, I am not going to go down that aisle. <laughs> so as you can imagine what any terrified five-year-old would do, I'm going to go find my mom. <laughs> we go find my mom, and you know, she, she actually passed away a year ago, just before Holy Week, so I was kind of uh, recollecting this story, and she came to me lovingly and gracefully got down on her knees, and she reminded me what that performance was for. It was not about the congregation. It was not about me. But this was for Jesus. This was your gift for Jesus. And it was at that moment I began to realize that every thought in my head, every emotion, my will, all has to bow down to Jesus. Because at his name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this special night of music, this time of worship, Lord, where we can express and sing these truths, these truths about your name as you looked up to Jerusalem, as you looked up to the cross. Lord, we give all our lives, all for you. In Jesus' name, amen.
just a note, you don't have to applaud every time. <laughs> and sometimes during our program, there'll be times that are so holy, so gracious. We believe it's all holy, but there's times that the quietness is just what we need to reflect on what the season is all about. And so, thank you for being here.
everything. A holy week reflection. It was one week. From Sunday to Sunday, everything would change. From palms to thorns. Celebration to mourning. Oh, what a difference a week makes. In just seven days, the world would be saved. Take the journey with us on this path to paradise as we reflect on each day of Holy Week. All of salvation history leads up to and goes forward from this week's saving events. We know him by many names. Before his birth, the prophets called him Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. During his life, he was known as the Good Shepherd, the Light of the World, and the Bread of Life. To Mary and Joseph, he was their son. And the name they gave him had more impact on the world than any other. It was the name above all names. They called him Jesus.
During his ministry, Jesus touched and transformed lives everywhere he went, sometimes calling on God the Father, sometimes acting on his own authority. He performed more than 37 miracles according to scripture. Word spread throughout the land of this miracle man named Jesus. Crowds began to gather to listen to his teaching, hoping to experience their own miracle of faith. As the earthly ministry of Jesus evolved, 
His name became more and more celebrated when word got out that he was traveling to Jerusalem for Passover. Throngs of people turned out to meet him. They waved palm branches and shouted his name, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. On Thursday of that week, Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room to share the Passover meal. Afterwards, he spoke with his friends about the future. They were unable to fully grasp the dire situation at hand as Jesus left them instructions 
for carrying on his work after he was gone. Passover week turned quickly from celebration to tragedy. Jesus was arrested, tried, and crucified. His name was profaned by mockers and scorners and unbelievers. His followers watched in horror 
as their beloved light of the world was transformed into the sacrificial Lamb of God.
Jesus, being in very nature God, made himself into a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and in the depths, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
the best choir in the valley. David Toom, the best choir director. He is unbelievable. There is nothing this man can't do. Well, one thing, when you bowed, when you knelt down on your knees, I didn't know if you could get up. Uh, but other than that, he amazes me each and every time. For our audio sound team, thank you back there. Orchestra, orchestra, thank you very much for participating with us. Uh, this is our Saturday night service. We have three services, uh, one a contemporary on Saturday night. For those of you who came expecting a contemporary service, this is the one week each year that I want us to be all together and to experience so you can experience our worship choir and, uh, and they can experience Saturday night as well. So we'll be back to normal on Saturday nights starting next week. And we, I love having the choir behind me. I love Oh, I'm in the choir behind me right there. I, I thought they were going to tell me they liked my preaching back there, but all they're telling me is they can see the big ball spot in my head. So I don't know where that goes. Uh, this is Palm Sunday. Seven days until Resurrection Sunday, the day we call Easter. But really, the story of Easter begins on this day. Seven days before Christ rose from the grave because it was on this day, seven days before Easter, that Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Now understand, he had lived on this earth for 33 years. He had a ministry for three years. And over the past three years, he had performed miracles and he had taught with authority and loved on people. And people started following him and coming around him. And everywhere he went, more and more people were coming to him. And now Jesus was aware that his time on earth was coming to an end. And as he came to Jerusalem, for the last time, for the Passover celebration, he knew what was awaiting him during this final week, but his disciples did not. Now, many people had believed him. Many people had followed him. They had heard the stories. What stories, you ask? Oh, he walked on water. He calmed the sea. He, 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 he cast out demons. He set the captives free. He made the lame to walk and the mute to talk. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He gave blind Bartimaeus his sight. He was the miracle man. And they wanted to know who is he, what is he, and when can we see him? Is he coming to the Passover? You see, each time he performed a miracle or each time he talked, they started wondering, could it be? Could he be the Christ? Could he be the promised Messiah of God? Could he be the one that, of which John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When he taught, he even said of himself, I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. I am the, 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 the salt of the earth. I am the way and the truth and the life. Those words, I am, rang deep with this Jewish culture because it's the same name that God used for himself when Moses called to him out of the burning bush, said, who are you? And God said, I am, ego I me. So Jesus was declaring himself to be not an ordinary man. He was God in the flesh. So as Jesus prepared to come into Jerusalem, he was in a village outside of the town, and he told two of his disciples to go to the village, and there they would find a small donkey that had never been ridden, untie him and bring him to Jesus. And if anyone asks you what you're doing, simply say, the Lord needs it. Well, by this time they had learned not to question Jesus, simply to do what he said. And they went into the village and found a little donkey that had never been ridden, began to untie it. Someone said, excuse me there, what are you doing? Well, the Lord needs it. Go right ahead. They brought it to Jesus. And Jesus took this colt of a donkey and climbed on him and started riding him down, a, down the curvy path that went from the Mount of Olives down into the city of Jerusalem. It wasn't a freeway, probably much not wider than this aisle right here. And the people from Jerusalem saw him up on the top of the mountain. They rushed to see him. They, with throngs of people, they crowded the streets. They put blankets on the road before him. And as Jesus came on the donkey, they waved palm branches shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
And that was the beginning of the final week of the earthly life of Jesus. You see, that's where we get the name Palm Sunday. The, the people took the palm branches and waved them at Jesus right there. It was excitement like un, no other they had ever known. The, the, it was a fever pitch of enthusiasm as the crowd swelled to get a glimpse of Jesus. But the excitement would not last. Within five days, the Jewish leaders would plot to kill him. Judas would betray him. The, the Pharisees would arrest him. Peter would deny him. The, the Roman soldiers would mock him and beat him. And Pilate would sentence him to death. They took a crown of thorns and crammed it on his head and put a robe and put it on his back. They built a huge cross and, and made him carry it all the way down the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, to a place called Golgotha. And there, people were shouting. The same people five days before that were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who came in the name of the Lord. Some of the same ones were saying, crucify him, crucify him. And it is for those people, all those people, all of us people, that he died. He hung on the cross between two thieves. And he looked up to heaven and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he breathed his last and gave up his spirit. And the moment he died, the darkness filled the earth. The earth trembled with a quake. And the veil on the temple split in two, knowing that the debt of sin had been paid. We have now direct access to God through Jesus Christ because our sins have been forgiven. Yes, his name is Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, Therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You know, the term Lord implies master, ruler, king. It's a powerful word filled with meaning. You know, you may have heard many times that to become a Christian, you need to make Jesus your Lord. I've had people ask me that. Pastor, how, how can I make Jesus Lord? And I answer, I got bad news for you. You can't because God already has. In Acts 2.36, the Bible says, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. It is clear that God has already made Jesus Christ master, ruler, and king. So the question is not how do you make Jesus Lord. The question of the day is how will you respond to his lordship? And I'll give you one word to answer that obedience. You obey your master. You obey your king. You obey your ruler. You obey your Lord. I believe that obedience to the word of God is how we are to live out our faith. I was reading an article recently. A Gallup poll said that on any Sunday, it just gets lower and lower. About 20% of Americans are in church, just lower and lower and lower. But what was more interesting about that, of those 20%, only half, 50% of those, half of those people uh, have a lifestyle that is anything different from the rest of the world that does not go to church. So what's the difference between those, those, the 10% of people who are different than the world? I believe it's obedience to the Lordship of Christ. It is living for Christ. It is letting the word of Christ rule in your hearts. It is saying, you are my master and my Lord, and I'll do what you want me to do, and I'll go where you want me to go. You see, too many people are Christians with their mouth, but Christ has never ruled in their hearts. Being a Christian is submitting your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I heard one time someone say about a conversion experience at a revival, it doesn't matter how loud you scream or how high you jump. What matters is how straight you run when you hit the ground. And that's the type of Christians I want. Not just emotional fervor, but people who run and follow Christ every single day. You see, there's many names for Jesus in the Bible. He's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, 
the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Savior, the Almighty, the door, the gate, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life, the Good Shepherd, the Word, the bread of life. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is the one with whom the Father is well pleased. You see, Jesus is a lot of things to a lot of people. To the architect, he is the master builder. To the astronomer, he is the bright and morning star. To the artist, he is the one who is altogether lovely. To the banker, he is the keeper of the treasury. To the farmer, he is the lord of the harvest. To the florist, he is the lily of the valley. To the jeweler, he is the pearl of great price. To the lawyer, he is the lawgiver. To the jurist, he is the righteous judge. To the surgeon, he is the great physician. To the sinner, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But to those of us who know him, he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. And one day, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we submit to your Lordship. We honor you this Palm Sunday as Master Lord, King, ruler of the universe. We want to obey you and follow you and let you rule and reign in our hearts. May we enter this week we call Holy Week with our hearts attuned to you to know what you did, why you did it, all for us, so that we could have everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Of all names, Jesus died so that we who are sinners could inherit eternal life. The Gospel of John records these words. You may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name.
BHC singers, your BHC singers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Orchestra, please, would you stand? Terry and David. Terry and David, please stand. AV people, please wave at us. What a wonderful evening of worship we have had together. Thank you for being here. We greatly appreciate worshiping with you. The choir, BAC singers have been here. I told them today, I think they have invested 6,000 hours together. <laughs> Some total in this. And it's a great privilege for us to sing it for you and with you. If you'd like to come and worship with us again, we're doing it tomorrow at 9 and at 1030. And then this next, during Holy Week, we have worship Good Friday at 6 o'clock, Easter, Easter Saturday at 5 o'clock, Easter sunrise at 6.30, and then Easter services again at 9 o'clock and 10.30. Come to them all. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Come to them all. Well, what a delight it's been to worship with you tonight. If you have questions about Bellevue Heights Church, on your way out, there's literature at the table that you can find out more about who we are. Most of all, know this. We love Jesus. Jesus is Lord, and we give him thanks for all he has done for us. And now, as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Now and evermore, World without end, amen and amen. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.